Secrets Moshe says that it is a tropical resort oasis on the famed Riviera Maya with enhanced luxury suites, unlimited gourmet dining and drinks, rooftop pools, numerous tours and activities, and a serene full-service spa and salon. Is it true? I always recommend to give a resort several months to work out their growing pains before visiting to get an accurate idea of what it is like to spend your money there. Most resorts are never ready to go when they first open, so there's a good chance you will come away disappointed. Well, Secrets Moshe has been open for seven months, so we are off to stay for a week, and in this video, we will tell you what we liked, what we didn't like, and where it rates in comparison to the other resorts we have stayed at. We hope to bring you the information we wished we had had before you spend your hard-earned vacation money, and make sure this resort will be a good fit for you. Hey everyone, this is Nancy from New Travel Escapes, and today we're going to give you our review of Secrets Moshe. Moshe is about a 50 minute drive south of the Cancun airport, just north of Playa del Carmen. It is a 10 minute drive to Playa del Carmen's 5th Avenue shopping district. Secrets Moshe has 485 suites with a contemporary design aesthetic. It is an adults only, all inclusive resort. From the minute you arrive, you can see the details and care that they've put into the design of this resort. Let's have a look around the resort so you can get a feel for what this place is like. Most of the restaurants are located on the ground floor of the main building and we will show you those later in the video. There are seven pools. The main pool is a lagoon pool, which is a really good concept. It is a zero entry with beach sand all around and into the pool for the first couple of meters, or six or seven feet, depending on how you like to measure things. Then it goes to a concrete bottom that they have tried to make more natural by designing it with gradual inclines and declines and several different depths. They have put rocks in certain places. It is trying to be a beach lagoon, and I did like it a lot. There were always chairs and umbrellas available around this pool. It is a very unique concept that I think they did really well. There is also a rectangular cross-shaped pool. It has some unique plexiglass walls at either end. Now, I will warn you that from inside that pool, you can't really tell that the wall is transparent. But from the outside looking in, that wall is totally transparent. So you really might want to keep this in mind if you find yourself in a bit of a compromising situation near that wall. You heard me, totally transparent, just saying. There are two pools that have swim-up bars, and this is a nice touch. 
If you'd like to be in the middle of the action, the activities pool has a large swim up bar at the end of it. If you prefer to be a bit more tranquil, there is a second pool near the activities pool with a second swim up bar and it's quieter. There is a shallow pool with hammocks for relaxing and there are three man-made cenote pools that are very restful. A perfect place for reading a book with a cocktail. The main activities pool looks good, but the design is not functional at all. It has a massive tanning ledge that is connected to two rows of underwater stairs. This is a bit of a design miss, in my opinion. We saw many people tripping or stubbing their toes on these steps, and because the tanning ledge is so wide, you actually don't have enough pool space in the pool when something else is going on. So when pool volleyball or Zumba is going on together in the same pool, you really need to get out because there's just no more room. The stairs and tanning ledge take up all of the square footage. Again, it looks great, but the function is a miss, so just watch your steps in that pool. The main activities pool always has something going on. They start the morning with live music at the pool, about 10.30 in the morning, and then things keep going on from there all day long. There are a plethora of activities that Secrets Moshe is doing really well. They have pool and beach volleyball, of course. They have bike tours and they have paddleboard tours. They have ping pong and other more sporty activities. Then they have games around the pool like bingo, trivia, or blackjack, and it changes every day. They also have things going on for the more crafty guests, like a macrame class. The resort really does have something going on for many different interests. If you want to know the details about the activities, download the AMR Resorts app and then choose Secrets Moshe. You can find the list of activities and shows as well as the hotel information on their suites, restaurants and bars. A great plus related to the pools is the amount of chairs and umbrellas available. Moshe hit the mark better than most resorts in this area. There are plenty of chairs and there is an umbrella for every two chairs in most areas. The activities pool chairs get taken first of course, but we never had a problem finding a chair with shade throughout the day. There are lots of towels available and there is a concierge at each pool to get you set up. Now they told me the pools are heated in the winter months. They would not commit to how cold the pools have to get before they turn the heaters on, but the fact that they are all heated can make a big difference if you're visiting in the winter months. Besides the cool factor, there is a reason that Secrets created that lagoon pool to be a pseudo beach, because the beach at Moshe is not really great. Beaches are different everywhere, but if you're looking for a beach resort, then this one is not going to be the best fit for you. It's fine, of course, and to many people, any beach is a good beach, but there are much better resorts in the area if you have your heart set on a beach vacation.
Next, we will have a look at the theater. It is an amphitheater style indoor theater with air conditioning. There really isn't a bad seat in here. It has its own bar area as well. The shows at Moshe are very similar to every other resort show. Shows are subjective, but there are shows every night from 9.45 to 10.30 p.m. This is later than most other resorts, but it does open up the dining times a bit better. It is easy to eat a later dinner, say at 8 p.m. here, and still make it to the show for 9.45, if that's your thing. There is a pharmacy on site for most of your healthcare needs. They even carry prescription antibiotics, so if you need to see the resort doctor for something, you can pick up your medication in the pharmacy. But the pharmacy also holds a surprise. A fantastic addition to Moshe that I have not seen anywhere else is their speakeasy called the Gypsy Club. After the show, the staff will give you a password, and then you go into the fully operating and legitimate pharmacy and give the password to one of the staff members and they will let you into the secret door through the wall into the nightclub. It is fantastic. Most resorts have a sports bar that doubles as a nightclub after the show is done, but Moshe has gone a step further with the Gypsy Club, and it is an excellent perk of their resort. If you're there, don't miss it. Moshe also has a sports bar called the Dark Horse, and it is the nicest I've seen at any resort yet. It is two stories tall with big leather seating throughout and lots of large TVs where you can watch your favorite game. They also have pool tables, darts, foosball, as well as, wait for it, a golf simulator on the second floor of the sports bar. Yep. Our first couple of days at Moshe, I found myself really missing a main bar near the restaurants that doubles as a bit of a meeting place. You know, when you say something like, okay, we'll meet at the martini bar at six for a drink before we go for dinner. This is something the Excellence Properties do really well, and I guess we are accustomed to it. But after a couple of days, the Dark Horse became the meeting place for a cocktail before dinner. It doesn't have the same vibe as a martini bar, but once we embraced the change, it was great. Unless your significant other is addicted to the golf simulator, and then you had best meet at Dos Almas tequila bar, or you may not get to dinner. One thing Moshe is excelling at, in my opinion, is the availability of live music. From morning until later at night, you can find live music somewhere on the resort. It reminded me of Secret Silver Sands, which is closed now. They really did music right, and if you like music, then Moshe is doing an amazing job offering different genres of music at various locations around the resort all day long. Let's move on and talk quickly about the suites. 
The vast majority of rooms are very similar in size and amenities, and it is the view that changes with each category. This is the entry-level room with a tropical view. Basically, the tropical view rooms are facing away from the center courtyard area, and the pool view and ocean view rooms are facing inside. They come with a king or two doubles. The rooms are clean, the bathrooms are spacious, lots of great water pressure, and the bedding was super comfortable. Not just that fuzzy blanket between two sheets, but a legit cozy, felt like bamboo fiber duvet. Our air conditioning worked really well. Secrets gives you a lot of toiletries in your room, including SPF 15 sunscreen, shaving cream, and bug spray. So if you are considering flying carry-on only, then this is something to keep in mind. The preferred club upgrade doesn't really change too much in the way of your room. They are in a more desirable location, of course, but that can be really subjective depending on what you find desirable, and some rooms are a bit bigger. The two real reasons to upgrade are one, if you want an a la carte breakfast, because at the moment the buffet or room service is the only place to get breakfast, and two, if you want to have access to the rooftop infinity pool. There is a small bar and restaurant up in the observatory that serve a la carte breakfast and lunch and it has a really nice infinity pool with stunning views. It is beautiful and very quiet up there and it is per for preferred guests only. Whether or not you upgrade is really dependent on what you're looking for in your vacation. I don't want to bog you down with information in this video so we will get into all of those details and more information about all of the different room options in our separate Secrets Moshe room video, so stay tuned for that one. Let's move on to the restaurants. There are seven a la carte restaurants, most located in the main building, one on the beach, one buffet near the check-in area, and they also have a 24-hour coffee shop. The Observatory Rooftop Restaurant is open for preferred club guests for breakfast and lunch. For dinner, there are Alora, featuring Italian cuisine, Bizu is French cuisine, Dos Almas is Mexican cuisine, Ember is their open fire grilled restaurant, Suki is Pan Asian. Bamboo overlooks the lagoon pool, featuring a Thai-inspired cuisine, and Sea Soul is on the beach, featuring Mexican and Mediterranean fusion. They are both open for lunch and dinner. Barefoot Grill is open for lunch. It is kind of centered between all of the pools, and it is really the place to grab some food and eat lunch at your pool chair. Market Cafe is their buffet restaurant open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if you are a buffet person, then this is one of a handful of high-end resorts that I know of that have a buffet available for dinner. There are three additional restaurants for Impressions guests in the Impressions building.
The food here was very good. Some restaurants are better than others, but overall the food quality was great. I'm talking about things like house-made truffled ricotta from Alora, fire-grilled garlic butter oysters, or roasted bone marrow at Ember. And an outstanding beef tenderloin in puff pastry from Bizu, just to give you an idea of the food. We enjoyed almost everything we ate during our stay. There are dress codes at Moshe, so make sure you pack accordingly. We are working on a detailed food and restaurant videos that goes into much more nitty gritty about all of the restaurants and the bars, and that one will be coming up very soon. There are multiple bars all around the property, and they're never far away from where you're sitting. The drinks were good. I did not find anything outstanding, but everything was of pretty good quality, and most of the bartenders made a great cocktail if they weren't crazy busy. Many restaurants have a signature drink, and those that I tried were very good. The drink service around the pools and on the beach were where Moshe fell way, way, way short. Moshe had probably the worst drink servers I have had at any resort, and I've been to a fair number of them so far. It was a real disconnect to me considering their restaurant service and concierge service is outstanding. Our best service all week was from a lifeguard named Gustavo, who not only did his job but three other people's job as well when guests weren't being looked after. I think this service problem will improve over time as many of the resorts in the area are suffering from a lack of good service staff coming out of COVID. As I mentioned much earlier in the video with regards to the growing pain situation, Moshe seems to have gotten through the worst of them. There are still a few that need to be ironed out like retraining their beverage service staff and other small things need a bit more attention such as a welcome glass of sparkling wine. Some people were served a welcome drink and others were not. It seemed to be a little bit hit or miss. Sometimes the mini bar was refreshed in the room and some days they forgot. Neither of these is a really big deal. We had great housekeeping service for our room, but others we spoke to said their turndown service only happened twice in the whole week they were there. So some inconsistencies with Moshe's newness still has to be tweaked here and there. And to be perfectly frank, for the prices that they are charging per person per night to come here, my expectations of them are high. They are at LeBlanc's level of pricing and they really aren't at LeBlanc's level for service. Maybe the impressions building at Moshe is better, but it was only in the stages of a soft opening when we were there, and I'm undecided if it will be worth the money. Not only are the rooms a lot more, but there seem to be some additional dining fees being on that side, and only time will tell if it is worth it. With everything we saw while staying there, I'm not convinced yet, but we shall see. All in all, I was really happy with our stay at Secrets Moshe, and it can comfortably fall into my top five resorts, maybe even my top three. Is it better than Excellence Playa Mujeres or Excellence Riviera Cancun? Well, we're working on a side-by-side -side comparison video to answer just those questions, so stay tuned. A huge thank you to all of our subscribers for watching our videos. We really, really appreciate you, and we hope that our videos are helping you to figure out which resorts are going to work best for you and what you want to spend your vacation dollars on. We have lots coming up on the channel, more about Moshe, comparisons between Moshe and Excellence, as well as our recent trip to Australia and more. Have a great day everyone and we'll be back soon. Bye!